Hey Cornerstone family, this is Ryan and we're here for our 242 uh, prayer time today. I hope that you're uh, excited to be able to join us and to be a part of our prayer time. Um, we'll wait a second to see people start popping in here. Hey, that's great. If you want to leave a comment, <clears throat> let us know that you're with us. That would be great. Uh, just give us a heads up uh, that you're here joining us. Uh, really glad that you are here joining us today. Hey, thanks, Christina. Hey, Paula, glad that you're here. Jody, glad that you're here. Uh, JP, glad to see you. Uh, hey, T2, glad to see you here. All right. Great to have you as a part of our prayer time today. I wanted to um, just ask you how you're doing with uh, the challenge I gave you. I gave you a challenge. I gave myself a challenge, too, to start reading through the Gospel of John. And um, I'm up to <clears throat> John chapter 4 right now. I'm just kind of slowly working my way through it. And that's been a real great encouragement to me today. Jesus uh, healed a, a uh, ruler's son just by saying the word, your son will be healed. He did it from a distance. He didn't need to be there uh, to touch him. He didn't need to see him. Jesus just said it. And so what I'm taking away from that verse today is we have a very powerful God who is able to do anything at any time. Um, the one who spoke the universe into being with his voice. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and everything in the world was created by him and through him. So that's the God that we have today. Uh, so be encouraged by that. And if, you're, uh, if you haven't had a chance to binge watch uh, The Chosen yet, I encourage you to do that. And um, keep on reading through the Gospel of John. Um, if you, uh, if you can, sorry, I think I've been jiggling the phone around. So if you've gotten some whiplash or, uh, seasickness, I'll try and keep better control of my phone right now. Um, wanted to ask you, uh, what was your favorite question for the day? What is your favorite show growing up as a kid that you watched? Um, I grew up in the eighties, so you can, uh, you probably know that uh, the A Team was one of my favorite shows um, with uh, Mr. T, and uh, that was pretty cool. The Dukes of Hazard was also on my one of my shows that I watched when I was a kid. If you could just put that in the comments, that would be great. What's a, a show that you really look forward to watching when you were a kid? Um, maybe it's Blues Clues. Um, this is for younger people. Um, or Dora. I remember watching a lot of episodes of Dora with when my kids were young. Um, wasn't my favorite, but you know, it was their favorite. Uh, and how about this? Now, this was one of my favorite shows, a kid's show. Um, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And one of the songs that he sang every time that he showed up was, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? My singing's really bad. I know you're just going to have to tough it out. Please won't you be my neighbor? And that's kind of the howdy neighbor. You know, that's uh, that was the the theme of his uh, welcome to the neighborhood of make, make believe or welcome to his neighborhood. And so today I just wanted to talk about a little bit about the great commandment. Um, that Jesus, when asked what the greatest commandment was, uh, in Matthew chapter 22, verse uh, 37, he was asked by a lawyer, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And the second is, he said, this is the greatest and most important commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. That ties right into Mr. Rogers there being a good neighbor. And I just wanted to ask you, uh, in this time of quarantine, in this time of when things are totally different, um, how are you doing with loving your neighbor? How are that? How is that going? 
I've been trying to pray for my neighbors um, ever since I moved into our neighborhood. And, you know, it's not been easy to get to know everybody. And I was just amazed this week that I was able to actually get a chance to uh, meet some new neighbors. Even during this time of quarantine, they were out walking around and I got a chance to meet a couple new people from my neighborhood that I had never met before. I don't think I actually have ever seen these people. So it was a great encouragement to me. Um, sometimes when we read the the parable of the Good Samaritan, we think that anybody can be our neighbor. And that's true. Um, anyone we bump into can be our neighbor. But what about the people who live right next door to us, right around the corner from us? Or if you live out in the country, you know, who lives a quarter mile from you around the, the country block there. Um, so we need to be, it's, it's part of the great commandment, we need to love God with all of our heart and soul and mind, but we also need to love our neighbor as ourself. So whatever I would want to do for me, that's what I should want to do for my neighbor. I should want to help them. I should want to be helped by them. Um, and I've noticed as I was out and about trying to buy some stuff this past week, um, people aren't necessarily super friendly. And maybe I'm not necessarily super friendly. Maybe I'm a little grumpy. Maybe I am a little short. Maybe I'm a little overly socially isolated or socially distanced. And I don't I felt like uh, I had my mask on when I was going outside and people were kind of looking at me sort of funny, like, you know, who is this guy? And uh, don't walk close to me. And um, it's real easy to be snippy. It's real easy to be short. Um, it's really easy to be unneighborly. And I just was challenged to be friendly this week. And so um, to my neighbors, so I wasn't God doesn't want us to be creepy, okay? So don't be a creeper. Um, but God does want us to be friendly and kind to our neighbors. And so um, I just want to encourage us all to um, take a step toward loving our neighbors, the people that live right next to us. I mean, that house right next door, um, Help the, the house right around the corner, or the people that you see, um, regularly in your neighborhood. Um, I found a good book, which I just started rereading. It's called The Art of Neighboring, and this book will be in the comments below. So if you're looking for a read, maybe you're tired of binging shows on TV and you'd actually like to read a book right now, this might be a good book to read. I just started rereading chapter one and two today, and it talked about making a map of your neighborhood and start praying for your neighbors. So, I made a map of my neighborhood, and I wrote down people's initials here so you won't know who they are. Um, let's keep it on the down low, right? So, But these are people that I'm going to be praying for and am praying for, have been praying for. And with my couple of new neighbors I met this last week, you know, I could put them on my list. And I just want to challenge us to, one, start praying for first you can't be neighborly to someone you don't even know. So we need to know who our neighbor is, know their name, and this can start in a simple step of just choosing, trying, praying for, praying for your neighbors by name, and then trying to have at least a one-minute conversation with one of your neighbors, with your mask on if you need to, but having a, or if you're socially distanced, you can have your mask off, and just have a nice little one minute or less conversation. Hey, how are you doing? Hope you're enduring this well. Um, great sunny day. I like your dog. All these kinds of things are simple conversation starters that we can use to begin to build a relationship with someone, a friendship, uh, a neighborly kind of thing going on. And then, um, so know your neighbor's names, step one. Step two, start praying for your neighbors. So. Get your little map out and start praying for those, maybe every day, a couple times a week. And then step three, have those little conversations with your neighbors, a minute or less. Um, and those can build over time, so it's natural and not creepy. And just one step at a time, God's in control. And uh, he wants you to love your neighbor just as much as you might like to. And then um, find a way to maybe help your neighbor. 
or allow your neighbor to help you. Um, a couple winters ago, I got stuck in the snow, and one of my neighbors that I've been praying for actually helped me get unstuck out of the snow. And that was a great thing for um, me because it was humbling. It, 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 the drift wasn't that deep. It was really embarrassing. I got stuck. And so uh, this neighbor came over and helped me get out of there. She helped dig me out, push me out. And so um, that's good because now I know her. She knows me a little bit better. And we can continue to slowly build a relationship. Maybe I could find out a little bit about people in my neighborhood over time so that I could pray for them, so that I could try and introduce Jesus into the conversation, or maybe just say, hey, they should, might share something that's going on, and you could say, oh, um, would you mind if I prayed for you about that? Um, that would be an easy question to ask. Most people do accept prayer, um, at least in my neighborhood, um, if you ask. So um, I just want to encourage you um, and I did hear from someone in our church today that has found that during this time of slowing down, that he has actually had more opportunity to engage with his neighbors because his neighbors have not been as busy. And so he set up some uh, dinner opportunities to connect with these people after, um, have them over for a meal, after this quarantine thing is over. And I was just like, wow, that is so encouraging. Even during this time of shutdown and difference, God's still working at helping us connect with our neighbors to love our neighbors as ourselves. And so as we kind of wrap up, that's my thoughts for today anyway, as we wrap up, hopefully you're encouraged by that. Um, I want to encourage you, let's just pray for our neighbors. Um, pray that God would help us to be, and especially to the people that I live with, in my own house. It's easy to be sometimes kind to other people outside of our house and get super frustrated with people inside our house. And, you know, I'm part of the problem with that. So let's pray for our neighbors that God would help us to love our neighbors as ourselves today as we kind of wrap up our 242 prayer time. And hey, thank you very much for joining for this time of prayer. I think God, we're just going to trust God that he's going to accomplish some big things through our prayers, asking him for him to work. Only God can do these kinds of things. Let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day, Lord. We thank you for your encouragement. Lord, we thank you for how you're at work in our body. We thank you for, we thank you and praise you, God, for how you are at work in our community. And we just want to worship you today, Jesus. Thank you for being the perfect example of what a good neighbor is. Lord, you reached out, you served us, you were one of us, you understood us, you you prayed for us, Lord, you are still praying for us even today. And Jesus, thank you for, for leading the way and showing the example that you want us to follow, Lord. And I just worship you today for that. Thank you for being our perfect, uh, our perfect shepherd, the one who loves us better and more than anyone else ever will do. And thank you for saving us, God. Thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior. And God, I just want to pray for our neighbors right now, Lord. I just pray that you would help them to know Jesus as their Savior. And I pray that, um, Lord, if they do know Jesus, they continue to grow deeper and closer in their relationship with you. And, and God, I do pray that you would help us to get to know our neighbors. Lord, help us to be a good neighbor to be uh, a good neighbor to the people that we are, we live close to. Lord, help us to know their names. Lord, I pray if we don't know them, that you will help lead us step by step to get to know our neighbors better, that we could start praying for people by name, God, that you would work in their lives. And Lord, we just trust you to open up doors of opportunity. We know, Lord, that nothing stops the gospel. Nothing can stop uh, prayer from uh, when we call out God and we pray according to your will, Lord, we know it is your will that all should come to repentance and believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So we just come boldly today, Jesus, asking for our neighbors. Pray that you would give us good interactions. Lord, help us to take a step and have a short conversation with someone, Lord, this coming week or the next week or the week after that. Lord, uh, Allow us to be able to help our neighbors in some way, rake their leaves or buy them a, a meal or 
give them a, some groceries or something, God. And, and I just pray, God, that you would help us even to be able to be helped by our neighbors. Lord, I just uh, ask that you would do some incredible things, God. Bring people to faith in Jesus Christ this week. Help us, God, as a body of believers to be drawn closer to Jesus, closer to one another virtually, and actually as we have conversations with one another, God. Um, we just want to thank you, God, for the power of the gospel, for the power of what it can be like when we live by the Holy Spirit. And God, we just ask for you to fill us with your Holy Spirit today. Help us to keep in step with your Holy Spirit. Help us to rely on your Holy Spirit's power and wisdom and guidance. And, and Jesus, we just are looking so much uh, forward to the day that you come back and make everything right. Lord, we just uh, are so excited to know you and to be able to live all of eternity with you, Lord, on the new heavens and the new earth, the home of righteousness where everything will be just right. We love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for this day. It's a real gift. Help us to use it, God, for you. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Hey, friends, thanks so much for joining us today. Again, if you would like to um, appreciate you praying, God hears and answers prayer. Um, there's a promise in John 4, 16, 24 that says, Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be full. That's what we want to do. We want to keep on asking the Lord. Uh, keep on praying to him. He knows what we need. He wants to answer our prayers according to his will. And that's what we want. This book is called The Art of Neighboring. It's a real good book. And uh, if you can, map out your hood. Map it out and uh, start praying for your neighbors name by name uh, personally. And I just want to thank you so much for joining us today. I'm trying to remember what we have coming up. Uh, be sure to join us for 242 prayer time um, this coming week. Oh, I want I know what I was going to say. If you, um, we're encouraging everyone to tell their stories. Everyone has at least a 90 second story of practical faith, how God is helping you to live your faith out. And if you could record your phone horizontally, not vertically, with a short, that's like this. Um, sorry, didn't mean to treat you dumb there. Um, you're not dumb. You're very smart. Uh, if you could record a 90-second story and send it to me at uh, Ryan at CBC Ludington. Um, we're wanting to put together, and we, we're doing this every week, we want to share practical stories of faith. Um, maybe you could share a practical story of faith of how God is helping you to pray for your neighbors or reach out to your neighbors. And so um, that would be a great thing. Or maybe there's something else that God's really doing in your life. Maybe through reading through John, God has been doing something in your life. Or um, through, I don't know, sky's the limit. Anyway, I wanted just to encourage you with that. Uh, be sharing your practical stories of faith. Hashtag practical faith. Um, looking forward to this coming Sunday morning's uh, message at 1030. We're looking for another great time together virtually, worshiping Jesus Christ together. And uh, hey, I want to let you know, we really love you, church family and friends. We're glad that you're participating. And let's keep on walking together with Jesus. I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon. Talk to you later.